Welcome to the Knowledge Itself series presented by Job A Speaks. The Knowledge Itself series is where we delve into various topics pertaining to gaining the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding the self. Before we jump in, make sure that you follow Job A Speaks on Facebook and Instagram, and make sure that you visit our website, jobaspeaks.com, for the valuable resources that you need to help you along your journey towards gaining the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding the self. I am Jabe, and today's presentation is the body of man and the tree of life. So we've all heard about the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil before, right? Especially for those of you that read the Bible, right? So there are 10 principles and 22 letters that form what is known as the tree of life. Okay, in the previous presentation, The Origin of Creation, Cosmology 101, we talked about the triple stage of darkness. We talked about the three unthinkable principles and the three intelligent principles. And we talked about how the voice or creative instrument arose out of that. And that creative voice and instrument was based on letters, and numbers and we know letters create words and then we have numbers okay and for the ancients all right especially the people of the bible who spoke in ancient hebrew language and their offshoots okay believe that the 22 letters of ancient hebrew uh were the framework and the basis of what is known as the tree of life okay and this constitutes the framework of the heavenly Adam, similarly in anatomy to his human counterpart, the earthly Adam. Man is a combination of three spheres of force, the intellectual, the moral, and the physical, which are related to the neshama, spirit, ruah, soul, and nefesh, body and animal nature. These forces or qualities find their activity in the outer or material world, which is alone cognizable and therefore existent to man because of his threefold constitution. So man, we have the ability to exist in the physical world while at the same time being able to tap into the, the creative energy, the creative forces, the universal energy and forces that were used by the unseen to create the seen, the physical, the world made manifest. Okay. And inside of our constitution, we have spirit, we have soul, and we have body. We have intellectual, we have moral, morality, and we have a physical aspect and a physical nature in us, right? So this is our threefold constitution. And that threefold constitution is represented in this diagram, okay, which is called the Kabbalistic tree of life by many, all right? And it has its three levels, okay, which represent the spirit, the soul, and the body, okay? And this, again, is the tree of life right here and also the tree of knowledge of good and evil all right and we're going to break that down so we'll be able to see how that is so you also see we have a great diagram here that depicts uh what we're talking about in relation to man here okay with the tree of life being superimposed on man okay and showing how we are the circle of life okay we are on our square as well here in the physical plane all right, and we can transcend through all levels, okay? This middle path, you know how Buddha speaks about the middle path, okay? The middle path is that tree of life. The middle path being the tree of life, okay? It's branches or it's offshoots right here, being the left hand and the right hand path, okay? Is the, knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or the serpent or the kundalini energy, the positive and negative universal forces that seek to find balance in man, as mentioned in the Origin of Creation Cosmology 101 presentation, okay? And it is our duty to bring universal energies to balance, okay? By having the proper knowledge, wisdom, and understanding the self. This is an inward journey reflected into physical form for us to experience this inward journey all right 
So let's talk about the first triad that's a part of this tree of life, okay? And this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The first triad is called the supernal or the heavenly triad, which represents what is known as Kether, Bina, and Hokma. all right? And that represents the father, the mother, and the son. Sounds very familiar, right? The father, the mother, and the son. We've seen this ancient iconography in many of many of ancient pictures, especially for those that deal with ancient Egypt knowledge and we deal with Asar, Aset, and Heru. Okay, that father, mother, and son energy. These three principles constitute the intellectual world. It represents the spiritus mundi, the world spirit. All right, so this is a spiritual triad here. Okay, the father, mother, and son. Okay, all right, and we also have the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit right same thing same operation right here okay but what i want you all to understand is that the goal is to take this out of being spookism okay and to put this into relation that this is an inward journey dealing with us dealing with man and that we all carry these principles these energies these entities with us every single day it is us whether we're conscious of it or not okay So let's look at the first principle. So the first principle is similar to Ayin Sof Or, okay, which was mentioned in the previous presentation. The single point, which was transmuted into a thought, is the first principle of the tree of life. So again, remember that single point of light, that vibration that expands and contracts, centri centripetal and centrifugal force, i.e. our breath, okay? Out of that breath comes the first thought, okay? And that first thought is the first principle of the tree of life. Ayin Sof Or is a life-giving energy, vibration. That is what feeds us, which gives us our sustenance, which allows the body to exist in the physical realm, okay? Now, Kether also known as spirit, divine name is Ahaya, I am, okay? And I mentioned in the previous pre presentation, the three intellectual or intelligent principles contained in Kether, which is Ahaya, Yahweh, and Elohim. Ahaya represents I or I am or an abstract thought. Yahweh represents it, it who was and is and will be, which is thought in time, thought in the past, present, and future, as well as God in nature, okay? Elohim, God in nature, thought in everything. Kether is the divine principle, okay? The principle of all principles, the mysterious wisdom, the crown of all that which there is of the most high, the diadem of diadems. Kether represents the supernal or primordial or heavenly atom, your crown, right? The top of your head, well, baby coming out, we say it's crowning, right? The crown of your head is symbolic and representative of spirit. You know how they say a baby has that soft spot? That's where the spirit was able to enter into the physical vessel through the soft spot in the top of the head, the crown, okay? Kether is symbolized by an open eye, Remember in the previous presentation, we spoke about Ayin and how Ayin was nothing or nothingness symbolized by a closed eye. So Kether being in direct descent from that, all right, is symbolized as the open eye. So whenever we see the open eye on a pyramid or in ancient iconography, anything like that is representing I am, it's representing spirit. Spirit is representing the most high, okay? If this eye remains open, the universe is maintained in being. But when it shuts, it vanishes into non-being. It vanishes into I-N, right? Because I-N is what? The closed eye. That is nothingness or nothingness. In the threefold division of man's nature, Kether represents the Nishama or spirit. 
All right. So the first aspect that comes out of the life giving force comes out of vibration, comes out of breath from within the triple darkness of space within us is thought, is spirit, is I am, is abstract thought. Okay. Abstract thought. The second principle is Bina, which represents mind, spirit, and mind, spirit, mind. Divine name of Bina is Ama mother okay our mind our mother all right our mind shapes and molds us and it's and our minds are shapeable and moldable it can take various forms right that's what woman that's what femininity represents being able to take things and morph them into various forms our our mothers being our first teachers our minds being our first teachers right being able to give us knowledge wisdom and understanding whether we realize it or accept that knowledge wisdom and understanding from our minds or not okay this principle is sometimes placed second and sometimes third when you deal with the actual breakdown of the tree of life right and the kabbalistic tree of life to be specific and it is generally called understanding Okay, so we have abstract thought, right? Kether, we have the I am, we have spirit. Out of spirit, we're saying next, the next emanation, when we're dealing with emanations, one thing coming out of the other, right? Just like our, us and our family lineages, it's one coming out of the other, one coming out of the other, continually perpetuating life, allowing what? Ayin, ayin sof, ayin sof or the nothingness, the endless, boundless nothingness, the infinite space, the vibration, all right, the breath to continue to perpetuate itself. The eye uh, is remaining open. Kether is, re Kether is remaining open and the universe is staying in existence through this perpetuation, through these emanations, okay? So we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this streamline of emanation. So the second emanation coming out that we can recognize, all right, in the physical is understanding. It is feminine and negative, the matter. You're, you're understanding what can be molded. You can mold and every day you're learning more. You're gaining more and more understanding and that understanding is being shaped and molded and changing who you are as a person, as a spiritual being, all right? It is feminine and negative, the matter as it were, in which Kether can take form and propagate itself. So what does that mean? That means that spirit can enter into understanding can enter into this matter this unseen matter which is understanding spirit can enter into understanding and then begin to propagate itself be able to expand and multiply itself inside of understanding think about how much richness comes from your understanding once you understand one thing that helped that understanding now can be used and shaped and molded and used to be able to do other things with it right just like you understand how to add now the basis of understanding how to get two plus two and have it equal four once you get that simple understanding now you can be able to count your money right you can be able to calculate certain items that you need to be able to buy for your household etc etc right so that shows you how spirit your spirit got inside of understanding mathematics and then it's able to propagate itself and expand itself right so bina is often called the heavenly mother or holy spirit the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're still saying the Father, the Son, and the Mother. Okay? Now, her symbol is the dove. Her dimension is depth. Think about mine. Like, you, you got some deep understanding. Ooh, you, you got some depth to you, right? Let's think about it in a more physical manner. OK, when we're thinking about woman and we're thinking about her womb and we're thinking about how 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 deep and how complex the nature of a woman can be. Right. That dimension, her dimension is depth. OK, while Kether is length. Right. So we have here compared the lingam and the yoni in, in Hindu mythology. Right. So if you Google lingam. Right. it will be an object that appears to be um, symbolic of a penis. If you Google yoni you will then see an uh, image that is representative of a womb, of a vagina, the lingam and the yoni, okay? The yoni being representative of bina, understanding, and mind, and being able to shape and mold and have its depth, and then kether being representative of the mascul masculine energy, the male energy, and being linked like a e, length, and being a 
like an erect penis, like an obelisk, like the Washington Monument to be able to give it directly to people's minds, right? Um, or like the ancient Egyptian obelisks and things that we see around the world, right? Um, this is representative of spirit, of length, okay? Of penetration, of propagation, all right? So this is important. Bina and her color is sky blue, the color of the Virgin Mary. Makes sense, right? From the union between Kether and Bina, emanates hokma so from the union of spirit and understanding comes wisdom see how that works from the union of spirit and understanding comes wisdom okay being able to listen to your intuition your spirit your intuition and then being able to then listen and and, and work through your understanding wisdom is now made manifest and wisdom is not only the creator of the universe but also the mediator between the uncreated and the created god and man you see in the form of hokma the son of kether wisdom renders comprehensive the abstract thought so you have very broad thoughts in your head your wisdom is what is able to synthesize those thoughts. And you say, I want to own a business. That's a very abstract thought because there's millions of businesses in which you can own. So that's a very abstract thought. But then from that abstract thought, as you begin to mold and shape that thought inside of your understanding, your wisdom starts to look at it and come forth. And then your wisdom starts to say, okay, I can create this t-shirt business now. Okay, yeah, I want to call this t-shirt business God body. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay. Yeah, and I can use a symbol of a pyramid on there. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. White embroidered stitching on it. Oh, the wisdom is allowing you to synthesize it down. Okay, and bring and render it comprehensive to where you know how to actually act on creating the business. A lot of us stay in the space of abstract thought and want to create a business, but I always say, Well, I don't know, you know, what business I want to do, things like that. But your understanding will start telling you, Well, I got this skill and I know how to, you know, build computers or, you know, I, I know how to cook very well. And then from that understanding, your wisdom will start grabbing it and starting to render it comprehensive to tell you what you should actually be doing. Okay, so we have Philo names it Messiah. So our wisdom, all right, which comes forth out of spirit and understanding is the Messiah, okay? And St. John calls it Christ, okay? So our wisdom, okay, that comes forth through our spiritual consciousness, our spiritual mind, okay, and understanding, okay, is Messiah or Christ, See how now we render it not being something outside of you, but something inside of you that you can cultivate. That is always there. You just have to further tap into it. We want to give the power to the people. You understand? St. Paul says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So this wisdom had already been ordained before the world was even made manifest when we look at emanation. Because right now we're talking about wisdom, right? But we haven't talked about the earth being made yet. We haven't talked about trees, plants, vegetables, anything like that being made yet, okay? But wisdom is here already, okay? So it was already going to be rendered unto man because man in his threefold constitution can tap into all of the creative potencies and powers that were made manifest out of the triple darkness of space. Okay. It says here, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of these princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. OK, just saying that it's been different epochs in time where people did not have a proper understanding of the universe, proper understanding of creation. And due to that lack of understanding of creation, 
okay, due to that lack of understanding. They then what? Destroy knowledge, destroy wisdom, destroy understanding across the face of the earth. And they're crucifying the Lord of glory. That wisdom that all men and women have the ability to tap into and reap the benefits from it. Okay? Okay. So Hokma is wisdom. Divine name is Messiah or Christ. The third principle is the sun or logos and the firstborn. It represents abstract ideas now. Kether abstract thoughts, right? Hokma abstract ideas. The fruit of the I am, the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of Kether forming in the mind, forming in Bina. Okay, forming in understanding. Okay, so the spirit, all right, is starting to propagate itself in the mind, starting to propagate itself in understanding, and therefore bringing forth from abstract thought, abstract ideas, which is the fruit. Okay, this third principle is the sun and the logos. All right, so we have to make sure you know that 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 is understood. We have it saying, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Okay. That's what spirit propagating itself in our minds and that abstract thought forming into abstract ideas. That's what that means. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Here we have presented to us the nature of Hokma. All right. The color of Hokma, as it pertains to the tree of life, is yellow or red orange, the color of Christ. It is positive in male. From Hokma emanate six principles, and they symbolize the dimensions of matter. Okay, so from this triad, this first triad of Kether, Bina, and Hokma, emanate six other principles which actually start forming the dimensions of matter. Now we're coming out of the dimensions of spirit and going into the dimensions of matter. All right. So let's take a look. The second triad, okay, is Hased, Gebera, and Tipareth. The second triad is called the moral or sensuous world. All right. So now we're coming out of that intellectual world, that, that world spirit. Okay, and going into the moral or sensual, sensuous world. It is the world soul, which emanates from the world spirit, the spiritus mundi. It consists of the positive or male principle chesed, which means grace or mercy. Mercy. So think about that in us, grace, our grace, our ability to show mercy. Also called gedula, which is magnificence. And the negative or female principle, pahad, which is punishment, right? You have mercy, but then you also have punishment, right? And pahad can go a step further, or punishment can go a step further and be called gebera, right? Severity, or and then judgment. These two, Hased and gebera, unite in the sixth principle or sephira a sephira is nothing more than a principle okay so these first two principles unite in the principle of beauty tippereth the highest manifestation of ethical life so the highest manifestation of our morality of our ethics represents and brings forth a beauty that radiates from our being okay and it is the ideal okay so just as we have kether and Bina making a union and in their union brings forth wisdom or Hokma. We have Chesed and Gebera, the left and right hand path. Okay. A part of the left and right hand path coming and making a union and uniting to form beauty. So when one is able to balance mercy, okay. With punishment, right. And severity right and judgment when we're able to balance that and not be too merciful and not be too severe in our punishment and our judgment and handling of certain situations we manifest a certain beauty of ethical life that manifests as the highest ideal okay as the highest ideal so these are character aspects that resonate in us but these character aspects are also forces that we use on a day-to-day -day basis okay
These are the universal forces that are seeking to find balance in man. So we can see based on how the world is operating today, how these forces are being unbalanced and not being balanced out through man and man's activity in the physical world due to a state of ignorance, due to the lack of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of self. Okay? So we're going to give a, a, a closer look at these principles. So Hasid, all right, being like the right arm, a part of the right hand path. Okay, that's grace, love, mercy, compassion. Okay, Hasid endows the world with feeling and sentiment. This principle is masculine and active. Hasid symbolizes life. When we go to the left arm or the left hand path now of man, it represents rigor, punishment, fear, or severity. Gebra endows the world with apathy and hatred. This principle is feminine and passive. Gebra symbolizes death. So the right-hand path symbolizing grace, love, mercy, and compassion, which is bringing life into the world. And then we have on the left-hand path, Gebra bringing rigor, punishment, fear or severity, all right, apathy, hatred into the world. And it symbolizes death, the right and the left hand path. Makes sense, right? The sixth principle. So now this right and left hand path of our hands, of our arms symbolically, meets in the solar plexus, tipera, all right? The solar plexus, okay? That's like your abdomen area, okay? All right, your abdomen area, okay? right? Like underneath your sternum, okay? Now these powers, this force, okay, meets and unites in beauty in the solar plexus. This principle is the common center of harmony. So now we have to bring that right and left hand path into harmony, okay? Just being on the right hand path does not do the world justice does not bring peace to the world being on the left hand path for sure does not bring peace into the world okay we've met people that we say are too positive and we've met people that we've that we've seen is too negative okay it is the beauty comes out of the balance that we see in people okay that coolness that calmness that peace that comes out of people that we can see in their everyday walk of life okay so this principle is the common center or harmony of Hasid and Gebera, of life and death, the active and passive in the moral world, okay? The active and the passive in the moral world. It is symbolized by the sun, okay? The heart of the universe and also the heart of the heavenly Adam or Kether, the Ahaya Asha Ahaya, the I am that I am, okay? That's what the sun represents. The sun represents beauty. It represents harmony, all right, in the moral world. The sun represents the heart of the universe, okay? The life force that pumps and gives life to the entire world, to the entire universe, all right? And it also represents the heart or the radiation, okay, of the I am consciousness, of our spiritual consciousness, our intuition. Tipereth is the seat of sentiment and the ethical qualities, Okay, it is inhabited by and influences the ruah, the reasoning soul, and the intellectual faculty. Okay, what we call intellect in the physical world. Okay, sits in our solar plexus. So, you know, if you feel it in your gut, do it. Hey, go with your gut is what we say, right? Go with that intellectual faculty. Go with that reasoning soul because that reasoning soul is seeking to bring harmony to your life. So go with it. That's what that means, okay? That's what it means. We have all of the data, all of the information we need to be able to live a holistic life, to be able to carry out that which we are supposed to carry out in this realm if we are balanced, if we are listening to ourselves and embarking on or gaining knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of ourselves from within, okay? So we're going to go into the third triad now. That's Netza, Hod, and Yesod, okay? The third triad is called the physical or material world. So now we're starting to get there into the physical or material world. We're just now starting to see how all of these other emanations, all of these other forces of the universe, okay, which we see as characters, 
uh, character traits or principles that man is supposed to embody and carry out in his day-to-day -day life just now starting to create the physical world, okay? The third triad is called the physical or material world and consists of the male or positive sephira, netza, all right, which means triumph or victory, and the female or negative hold, which represents glory or splendor. They constitute the legs of God, okay, the legs of God, the legs of the Most High, being triumphant and victory when we're acting now we're actually in motion and we're carrying out these other principles, this love, this compassion, this mercy, this grace, all right, this punishment, this judgment, this severity, wisdom, understanding, beauty, right? Um, spirit, when all these other forces now are being acted upon and moved on, now we start to see triumph and victory and glory and splendor. Okay, and they represent the centripetal and centrifugal energies of the universe. Those energies that expand and contract, those energies that repel and push away or bring to you. Okay, so when we start to go in motion, we're either pushing something away from us or we are bringing something toward us. Okay, or we are going toward something or going away from something. Okay. For all the energies, forces, and increase in the universe proceed through these principles, okay? In turn, they unite in the Sephira Yesod foundation. So our victory, our triumph, our glory, our splendor unite in forming foundation, the principle of all generation, okay? So all of these energies are coming together, all right, from Kether all the way down into Yesod to start being the basis of the principle of generation, of creation. They represent the deity as the universal power, creator and generator of all existences. We learn from the great brother C. Freeman L. And you can still watch his videos on YouTube to this day. Okay, God, all right, generator, operator, destroyer. Okay, God, generator, operator, destroyer the deity as the universal power creator and generator of all the existences that's the embodiment of these principles being acted out okay so by triumph and glory we comprehend extension by triumph and glory we represent we comprehend extension multiplication and force okay because all the forces which were born into the universe went out of their bosom and it is for this reason that these two sephirah are called the armies of Yahweh, the armies of yod Hey vah Hey, okay? The armies of the past, present, and future, okay? Are those energies that came through the mind of man, okay? And they have come through the universe and have, have extended, have multiplied their force upon the face of the earth, okay? Netza, which is the right leg and thigh, represents triumph, firmness, and victory, being steadfast in your beliefs, being steadfast in your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding the cell, and being steadfast in your purpose, okay? This principle is masculine and active. Hold represents left leg and the thigh, okay? Splendor and glory. This principle is feminine and passive. All the energies, forces, and increase in the universe proceed through them. Just think about it in the physical. If your, le if your right leg and thigh and your left leg and thigh is not moving, okay, you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You will never be able to comprehend extension, multiplication, and force because you're not actively moving about the physical plane, acting on your thoughts, acting on your ideas, okay? By acting on your thoughts and acting on your ideas, now you'll be begin to triumph over aspects of your lower self. Okay, you'll be able to comprehend the extension and the multiplication that is being brought into your life by acting on what the Most High has given to you. All, both of these principles find their foundation in Yesod, the generative area, all right, of man, okay, and woman, all right, foundation. This principle is the seat of the generative principle. 
everything shall return to its foundation from which it has proceeded. All marrow, sea, and energy are gathered in this place. Okay, so just think about our, our genitalia, our genital area, all of the marrow, all of the sea, all of the energy is gathered up in this place. Okay, and we can create from that creative potency, but that creative potency comes from the head down into that generative area. Okay, just think about ejaculation. It's from the head, semen coming from the head, from the glands and the head down, and then out through the penis. Okay. So we have to understand from on high down to this realm. That's why sex is the most divine act and it's carrying out all of these creative principles coming down simultaneously to create another human being, okay? And allowing another spiritual being to enter into a physical vessel, okay? We are engaging in the creative act of the universe. We are engaging in the emanation of creation and of the world through that act. Netza, Hod, and Yesod represent deity as the universal power creator and generator of all existences. Okay? And then we have the 10th principle, Malkuth, which represents the feet. It is the kingdom, the natura, naturata, the material world. Okay? The actual material world, which we see with our two physical eyes. Okay? represents the feet of heavenly Adam. The name of deity within this principle is Adonai, the Lord. Okay, so once all of the creative energy has manifested into this physical plane, into this material world, all right, that embodiment of man on high is Adonai, the Lord, Lord meaning the master, then ineffable yod he vah Yahuwah. Okay, other names of Malkuth has been the queen, the matrona, the matron, harmony, daughter, bride, Eve, and the Shekinah, the real presence of deity, is made manifest in the physical world to seek experience and realize its creation. Malkuth influences the nefesh, the instincts, the sentiments, and emotions, the animal life of man, the material world influences your instincts, your sentiments, your emotions, your animal life, the aspect of you which is human, okay? But for us being the original people, for us being spiritual beings, okay, we not only have the phys inhabit a physical body that is acted upon by these lower vibrations, okay, having to eat, things like that, but we have a higher spiritual form, okay, that does not have to live off of that, okay, and, and lives off of divine energy, off of life force, off of the principles that are used to create the universe, okay, so this is Malkuth, so let's take a look here, we're bringing it all home now, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, like the body of man, the tree of life is itself divided horizontally into four planes and vertically by three trunks or pillars, okay, here go your three trunks, okay, your four planes, one, two, three, four, okay, so we went through the here, Kether, Bina, Hokma. Right? Gevara, Tipereth, and Hasad, and Hod, Yeso, and Netza, that's your three, and Malkuth being your fourth. Okay? Malkuth being your fourth plane. Okay? And we'll talk about it in the next presentation, the four worlds. Okay? The central pillar. Okay? The center pillar right here. Known as harmony or mildness or sometimes as the perfect pillar. All right? Perfection, the perfect pillar. Consistent of kether, okay? Consistent of kether. First, then tipereth, okay? And then yesod, and then malkuth, okay? And then they have a hidden 11th principle here, which is doth, which is knowledge, okay? Listed here, this is your crown. Then they say like doth, knowledge being like that black dot that we mentioned before, right? Like the, the, the third eye, right? That higher spiritual consciousness that we all have. That's the middle pillar, okay? 
That's the perfect pillar, the center pillar of harmony or mildness, okay? This is the middle path that we should be seeking to follow where we're in balance, abstract thought into knowledge, okay? And then that knowledge coming down into beauty, which is the balance of all of these principles above it. And then going down into foundation where all of the creative potencies are balanced. And then that being projected into the physical world, a place of harmony. Okay, what we mostly see is energy ping ponging off of all of these different forces and man not being centered. So therefore the world appears to be in a state of chaos. Okay, so now we also go into the right hand pillar. Okay, the right hand pillar and that ha is known for Hokma, Hased, and Netza, which is active, male, and positive. And is the called the pillar of mercy, the yin, the yin, yin and yang. So the yin, okay, the pillar of mercy, the pillar of mercy. All right, the central pillar, the pillar of balance. The right hand path is the the, the pillar of mercy. Okay, the left hand pillar or the left hand path of severity. Okay, that of bina, pahad, and hold, which is passive female and negative and it's called the pillar of justice okay these two pillars constitute the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so yin and yang is the knowledge of the tree of good and evil all right just like the caduceus where you have the snake going up the rod and you have the two snakes intertwined that's the two snakes intertwined right here right here okay the yin and the yang the positive and negative okay these two pillars constitute the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because they are made up of unbalanced forces which can only find equilibrium, can only find equilibrium, okay? In the central pillar or trunk, all right? So yin and yang can only find balance in the center. So for us to find balance, we have to bring our right and left hand energies, our positive and negative forces to the center. Okay, we have to bring them to the father. We have to bring them to the crown. We have to bring them to abstract thought. We have to bring them to Ahaya, Asha Ahaya. Okay, which is contained in the triple darkness within us. Okay, this is why they say meditation and stuff is very important. Okay, this is key. The active mood of the divine light enters the right hand pillar through Hokma. And the passive mood enters through Bina. The union of these two lights creating the central pillar, the word or logos. See, the word was made flesh. Sorry, y'all. The word was made flesh. You see, the word made flesh. Ahaya, Asha, Ahaya made flesh. Okay. The formulation of this word by balancing the moods of light, by balancing the vibrations of positive and negative energy constitute the great magical work of man. That is what we are here to do, to balance out the energies within ourselves. The energies that are within us are coming from the universe seeking balance, seeking experience within this physical world, and they're propagating their cells through our physical form. And we are the Lord. We are the master. We are the crystals. We are the messiah that is to use this energy in order to bring harmony to ourselves and to this physical world the work is supposed to be done by us okay you have the power you have the power okay so this is the body of man and the tree of life presentation okay make sure that you follow Job A Speaks on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure you share this video out to your friends, family, anyone who you know seeking knowledge, wisdom, and understanding the self. And make sure that you visit our website, jobaspeaks.com, for the valuable resources that you need to help you along your journey towards gaining the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding the self. I am Job A. See you all next video.